let me introduce y'all to this YouTube family Showing us the way to get out of debt gradually My man Josh, he's the king of the household Wife Christine putting debt in the chokehold and the kids, they are Grace and Zoe All four together living life so holy That kicking Sunday, they leave vlogging Dave Ramsey plan gonna have us live large And every day we'll see part of their lifestyle How they budget and they keep things wrote down See them work through the envelope system Credit card goals and the money goes with them You will see how the family strives Cutting debt like a life and still have a life, huh? Lady Vaughn show us how to have fun When you hear this song, let me hear you say that is dumb That is dumb, that is dumb, that is dumb Let me hear you say it louder Welcome, are we going? We're going. We're going. We're going. Welcome to an incredibly, probably the most tacky Debt Kickin' Sunday we've had. I dressed up for you guys. And he's clashing with me big time. So if it bugs you, he refuses to change. But he smells good. He just took a shower. Okay. So, Debt Kicking Sunday. This is a thing we do. What's up? We shoot every Sunday and I upload it on Mondays. So, um, if you're new to our channel, you can expect that. And you guys left a couple weeks ago some great questions for us. So we're just going to probably turn every Debt Kicking Sunday into your questions. So Then it really wouldn't be a Debt Kicking Sunday then, would it? Yeah, because these are Debt Kicking Questions. So leave your Debt Kicking Questions down below. First subscribe to our channel. And then leave your questions, because we have some good ones. Okay. Oh, you go ahead and start first? with it. Can you read my handwriting? What is the glare of it? Is... What are your goals now that you're debt free? Stay debt free. Stay debt free. <laughs> that was easy. Check. Next. To survive this last quarter of 2013. What are your goals <laughs> now that you're debt free? Well, to continue to, continue to be debt free and to move on to the baby steps. Yeah, we, we have a lot of costs right now, you guys. We're just like a lot of people going through. Yeah, we'll answer that and there's a question that's close there's to that. There's a question. Problem. Okay, so goals. Um, obviously... To finish the baby steps. To finish the baby, but 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 we just became debt free, and now we're kind of pausing because we have expenses to pay for. So 2013 or 14 is going to be the year that we uh, build up baby step three, which we'll talk about in that next question. Our three to six months. I want a big old fat savings account. There That's our goal. Okay, and keep paying cash for everything. Let's see. Next question. Do you worry about falling into bad habits again with spending money now that the goal of paying debt is gone? <laughs> you know what? No. Bad habits. Once you're on the other side, you're debt free and you've paid off all your debt. I think that that's the farthest thing from my mind. Because every time I spend one dollar, I'm like, do I have it? Is it in the budget? And can I buy it? Right. There is no, ooh, I'm debt free. I want to go buy this or go right. buy that it's just for me it's just the opposite now that i'm debt free right. i'm like i hoard my money i agree like if i have a 20 in my wallet my goal is to see how long i can go with that 20 in my wallet not how fast can i spend it it's just for, for me it's the opposite i want to stay this way we're almost five years in since we started our total money makeover and the temptation to like put it on a credit card or like we haven't used credit cards for five years that's not even there. The temptation isn't even there. Like, there's this voice that goes off when, when you hear, you know, you could save money or you're in a department store and you're like, you can save 10%. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I mean, it just is blaringly loud that you, you just don't, it's not even a possibility. And, um, in fact, when we hear people financing things, we just cringe automatically. It's, I don't know, it's a built-in defense mechanism, but no, we are never tempted. We talk about purchases and big purchases, which is anything outside of our regular budget, but it's always paid for in cash. We save for it. If we want something, I mean, it sounds cliche and dumb and boring, but if we want something, we save for it. We divide it up, say we, we always put a goal to it, like we talk about if we want something, 
okay, when do you want it? Six months, a year, four months, whatever, and whatever we decide how many months, we divide it up, the cost of it per month, that's what we save, then when six months comes around, we just go pay cash for it. We make it happen. In fact, we have a big purchase we're gonna share with you guys once the big purchase comes and how we made it, and it was really cool. So, okay, next one. Giving. How do you budget your giving? As the Lord leads. As the Lord leads or, or, or a set, set amount. That's a good question. Okay. Mm. This is a whole video in itself, you guys, on giving. This is a whole channel. Whether you call it a tithe, whether giving. you call it giving to a charity, whatever you call it. This was a big part of our journey to becoming debt free was realizing for us, because we are religious and Christians, that it's not our money, it's God's money, and it's much easier, the flow of money goes through your hands much easier, this is what Dave Ramsey taught us, when you have an open fist versus a clenched fist. Money can't get through a clenched fist, but it can get through an open fist. And we, it just hit us, and for the first time, um, we are tithing, a percentage so we give a percentage every month to our church as we get raises and as our income increases so does the amount of giving that we do um, that answer it really well and then if God is leading us to you know besides our regular tithe that we give um, to missionaries to give to that cause or whatever reason then that is above and beyond what we give. So, and the Lord lead, the Lord gives us opportunities, so many opportunities to give that I could outgive our budget, and I've had to learn not to do that. It's really hard. But um, giving, there are so many wonderful things to give to. Another way we give is um, next year I have a goal of going of running. Um, four or five Ks after the baby's born. You know, things like that are also great giving, and that's that's aside from, you know, our church giving. So anyway, in a nutshell, without saying a specific amount, that's how we handle giving. Anything you want to add to that? Nope. That's okay. crystal clear. Where do you put the emergency fund money? Dave mentions a money market account, but the bank is 1% as the... This person looked into it, and their bank is 1% as a savings account. Now, it depends what ER, what emergency fund you're talking about. Um, your baby step one, the emergency, what is that called? My pregnancy. It, your $1,000 emergency It's 9 o'clock at night, Baby guys. step one. Baby step, so your $1,000, that needs to be in a place where you can access it. Um... Because, you know, you might, I mean, you're going to need that. You will use that, guaranteed. And then your your baby step three, which is your three to six months of savings, whatever you deem that to be, it could be... Five bucks or 50,000 bucks. Right. In, what in it, between. It's more of a number for me, what my comfort factor is of what that three to six months will be. That needs to be put in something. Are you okay? You're like, oh... It's pregnancy. <laughs> a few more weeks and we're going to get through this. This is normal. <laughs> um, the three to six should be put into like a savings account. That the is three to six 1%. should be in a money market account that you can write, have a debit and checks, and you can yeah. write checks and debit card against it. So through your bank. Exactly what you said. Even though it's a 1%, it's a safe 1%. Instead of... Well, you can shop around for money market accounts. It doesn't have to be through your bank. It could be through your financial business or something. You know what I mean? Like, right. Like Fidelity or something like it that. It just needs to be safe. It needs to be something that you're not going to lose your shorts on. Yeah, but, but see, you don't... You're, it's it's there to cover you. It's not there to make you a ton of money. Because if it's right. in there a ton of money, then it's going to be in an account that you could lose the money to. You want yeah. it to be in a fairly low, secure... If it only makes a little bit of money, that's fine. Because hopefully we're never really going to touch it, but it's there if we need it. If it's an account that's going to make you, you know, want to make you a lot of money, you're also going to lose a lot of money right. because it's going to be in one of those. Yeah. And, and, you know, my guess would be right as you're at your low and you've lost half your money, that's when your emergency is going to come. So yeah. I would recommend just a money, money, money market mutual fund that's just a low percentage that you have check and debit privileges yeah. to use. That is safe. 
your thousand dollar emergency fund, I keep it here at the house. Yep. That way if something goes wrong, alternator blows up in the car, get a flat tire or whatever, microwave burns up, fridge breaks or whatever, I can just take cash out of the envelope and go fix it. It's right behind, for those of you that are curious, all of our guns. <laughs> and safe. <laughs> safe. <laughs> Okay, so should we refi the house to pay off credit cards? You know the answer to this one. <laughs> well, hold on. I thought about this one earlier. My answer would be, like, well, it all depends. It's two-sided. Do you refinance the house to take money out to pay off credit cards? No. But if you have a huge mortgage right now, and you could refinance it, get a much lower rate, and save like three to four hundred, five hundred bucks a month, depending on your rate, to apply that three to four hundred dollars towards your baby yeah. step. Yeah. yeah, I would do it. We did it. We saved like three hundred bucks a month refinancing, and we put that right towards our debt snowball. Yes, that was a good move. It was smart. So, but but refinancing and tapping your equity to mm -hmm. just pay your credit cards off, no. Because. No. In your mind, I think this is a woman that asked this question, and I have been there, and I so know how you think. You just want that debt gone. Like, you want to get through it so that you can plow through your snowball. But, um, the problem is, is your spending habits. Are those really fixed and changed yeah. so that this doesn't happen again? More than likely, for most people, no. It takes some time for those habits to change. So I would not, I would not refi the house to pay off credit cards. No. But I would, like I said, I'd recommend it if you did it to lower your payment and then you could put that right. towards your debt snowball. I not agree. your credit cards, but your snowball, wherever you're at in your snowball. Yep. Right? Yes, yes, yes. But don't pull your equity out of your house. Not I, I wouldn't do mm -hmm. it. Okay, you guys, so we're going to make this a two-parter. So we're going to stop right here. And next week, we're going to come back and finish this off. So. See, that was a hook. See, get you, get you uh -huh. come back. I'll probably wear a different shirt next time, maybe. You're hoping, right? No, because we're shooting it right after this video. <laughs>